became physics class, started my attitude and love for science. So I took a farther step back and started to reevaluate even more. I started thinking about what I was passionate about, what I was good at, and what I wanted to be when I grew up. So I decided that I was good at humanities. Looking back at my old courses, I did really well in English history classes. I was really passionate about learning about cultures and people and places. For example, I went to Italy this summer, and it was the coolest experience ever because I got to learn about everyone who was there before me and learn about the rich history that we have there. And I realized that when I was a kid, I wanted to be a writer. So I thought, why not travel journalism? Because that's writing, and I still get to learn about cultures and peoples and places, and it just sounded perfect. So that's how I ended up with my topic, which is journalism. Um, my internship was served at Steve Weekly, which is a weekly news publication out of Charlottesville, Virginia. There, I met my mentor, the editor of the paper, Jessica Luck. But while I was there, I also shadowed um, some of the staff writers, such as Aaron O'Hare, who was the art staff writer, and Sam Bars, who was the news staff writer. I had many tasks, but by far my, I had many tasks such as um, looking through old archives for someone who was doing a documentary in Britain. I think it was actually, actually for like the BBC, which I thought was really awesome. Um, I got to transcribe interviews and I got to go to a bunch of interviews with different people for Knife and Fork, which is another magazine that they do. By far my favorite though was with the Virginia Film Festival, which happened to be going on when I was doing my internship. My third day at um, Shadowing, I got to go to the press conference for the film festival. And it was really awesome because I sat in this audience with a bunch of reporters and newscasters and everyone who was learning about the film festival and no one questioned why I was there. No one questioned why a 17 year old kid was with a bunch of adults. And I really felt like a reporter for the first time in my life. And I thought this is something I could do. So that was probably the coolest experience of my entire life. And it was really awesome to listen to Joey Cabasa, who is the uh, arts director at UVA talk about why he chose these films and how they were gonna shape our community in a way that was new and exciting and how we needed it at this time. This was right after the Charlottesville events um, from August. And it was all about like our community and how Charlotte was gonna like start telling its own story, which I thought was really awesome. And overall, it's just the coolest experience of my entire life. This is my favorite picture from Seville. <laughs> and it's hanging in the back of their um, lounge area, I guess. I really thought it just encompassed all of Charlottesville because what is more Seville than a shirtless Thomas Jefferson drinking wine? <laughs> um, I thought it was so cool to work in a place that was so zanny and so eccentric as this one. And it made me wonder why there aren't more places like Seville in the world. And that's how I got my research question. How does print media, like newspapers, kind of compare to digital media today when everything's online? And it actually wasn't as bad as I was thinking. In this digital age, we're kind of taught that everything's online, if you don't know something, Google it. And I was expecting everything to say, print media is gonna crash and burn, like there's nothing there, like robots are taking over, prepare yourselves. And it actually isn't that bad. <laughs> um, print media is actually coping pretty well. I found out a lot of newspapers are going digital and staying in print. For example, Seville, they publish their stories um, every week. Wednesday night, a truck comes out and they update their like, I think they're newspaper boxes. I don't actually know the like, name for them. They update their newspaper boxes. So if you're out late on Wednesday night, you can grab a paper or Thursday morning. But if you actually want to find a story online, you have to wait till Thursday eight in the morning. So it's a bit of an incentive to go out and get a paper instead. But um, online, if you find a story you like and you don't finish it or something, or they want you to get a paper, they say, hey, read more about Sam's bar, Sam Barr's article of Chris Cantwell um, in the paper this week. Here are your box informations which I thought was pretty cool and a cool way to cope with the new change. So for my community service, I decided to go with the more creative aspect of writing. And I wanted to start a literary magazine at the middle school. That didn't work out though, because they get out a lot earlier than us and I couldn't get out of school at that time. So instead I went to Ms. Pelicane, who is the literary magazine editor supervisor here at the high school. And she said that we couldn't do a lit mag there, but we could do a lit mag contest where the students would get their work published in our literary magazine in April. So that's what we did. We started a contest with three categories, art, prose, and short stories. And we let the middle schoolers submit their work where we would judge them and then we'd choose the winners and the winners would go in the lit mag, which came out, I think it comes out this month actually. Um, we had overall four submissions, which wasn't bad. A lot less than I was expecting, but still pretty awesome because these kids are super talented. Like their work was really awesome. 
Um, no one submitted anything for art, but we had three short stories and one uh, prose piece. The prose piece was the winner because that was the only one there. But it was really good. It's about internment camps in Japan. Um, her name was Artella, I'm about to butcher this last name, Amadi? Is that how you say it? Um, and then the winner for the short stories was Lionel Strauss, who wrote this really awesome and kind of psychedelic um, story about a drummer who, when he drummed, he'd fly and he'd float through a mountain or something like that. I don't know. It was really awesome, though. Like, it was really cool to see these talented kids put in their work to a upper level contest and then get published. Like, they have such promise. Afterwards, I asked them to fill out a survey just to let me know how it went and what they thought about it, what they do it again next year, what can we improve? And I found that a lot of them found out about this through teachers. So I'm thinking next year, if we do it again, well, we're going to do it again, but next year when we do it, we're going to um, have more teacher involvement, maybe say, hey, we extra credit if you do it. Um, but I found that all of them would do it again, which I thought was super cool. That will also be serving as my legacy for next year. Miss Pelican has already put it into motion for next year. So this project had a lot of significance, not only to me, but to the kids from the Lit Mag contest. For me, it told me that I probably don't want to do journalism just because I can't see myself having the interpersonal connections that journalists do and sitting down and transcribing all my notes and having to pick like, the perfect pieces for the one article that I'm writing. But I think maybe creative writing would be something I'm interested in. And it was also significant to the younger kids because now they have somewhere to go in high school when the eighth graders feel kind of left out, but now they have somewhere where they feel connected. My advice to future students is be patient and maintain perspective. Something is eventually gonna work out. Like it's all gonna be okay. The universe eventually has to say yes. The no's will stop piling up somewhere. And you've made it this far. You've worked so hard to get to where you are right now. And this is the easiest year. Graduation is just around the corner and you got this. Just remember that. My future plans, I will be attending the College of William & Mary next year, class of 2022. Um, I have yet to decide what exactly I want to do. I know I want to do a global studies major, but I'm not sure I want to accompany that with a pre-med track, an English minor, or a film minor. And that's it. Thank you for your time. Any questions? Cool. Can I de-mic now? Okay.